It's Dark Side Phil's Game of the Year Awards for 2015, the top 10 best games of the year. Honorable mention, Soma. Well, you know, Soma kind of blindsided a lot of people this year. This is the game made by the same studio that made Amnesia the Dark Descent many years ago. A little game that kind of went viral, became a very popular hit on the internet, especially for people doing Let's Plays of it with face cam and kind of getting scared by it. And let's face it, Amnesia the Dark Descent was a game that was meant to scare. With monsters, jump scares, psychological horror, and a lot of stuff going on in the game that really terrorized you. So when Soma was released, a lot of people were thinking, oh, it's going to be more of the same, but it seems like an interesting premise. Supposedly you're in the future, it's more about a sci-fi angle with robots and almost like a post-apocalyptic underwater world, and people really didn't know what to expect, but were hoping for more of the same. Well, it wasn't. Soma ended up being a completely different style of game, and even though there was some survival horror element in it, it really wasn't focused on that. It really was more of a psychological thriller where, spoiler alert, you're in the future, you are an AI. You're not even a human. You're, incorp you're incorporated inside and inhabiting a robot cyborg body, and you are on a mission to basically kind of save the human race, which apparently has been destroyed by a post-apocalyptic event. And all these psychological questions pop up, like, are you still human? Are you really alive? Can an AI be considered a living being? Uh, is it even worth it to continue on with the mission or not, since most of, if not all of the human beings are dead? And these are crazy questions that, what video game out there would make you think so seriously about the human condition and death and the afterlife and the presence of AIs and are AIs human beings? And it really is kind of a wow, mind fuck kind of a game at its core. But I think that kind of went right over the heads of a lot of people who were fans of Amnesia and were just looking for cheap jump scares and survival horror. They didn't get it really in Soma. I really enjoyed Soma. I thought it was a great game. Is it enough to say, wow, it blew me away and it's better than my top 10? No, but it's still a game worth mentioning and it's still a game that if you missed out on it or you skipped it because you heard it's not Amnesia, well, you should still check it out. It's great. It's very colorful. Some of the best underwater scenes I've ever seen in a video game in my entire gaming experience. It's definitely worth a play. Check it out and don't listen to those naysayers who are like, Ugh, it's not more the same. Sometimes better is different and better is better. Now on to our official countdown entry at number 8, it's Life is Strange. And yeah, the truth of the matter is, I actually was going to skip over this game earlier this year because really not a lot of people had talked about it, I hadn't heard too much about it besides it was going to be kind of a mystery murder game where you're trying to figure out what happened to a missing girl and that you were going to have some kind of a time manipulation mechanic. But what Life is Strange turned into is one of those games that just lends itself so well to commentary and to people trying different combinations of decisions in the game that it ends up being one of the most enjoyable games that I've played in the entire year. Now, there are some things that Life is Strange do really well. Character development, in a lot of ways for certain characters in this game is pretty outstanding. Being able to actually travel through time at certain portions and see previous older versions of these characters and how life decisions over time change them and morph them into the people that they are in the modern day was a really cool touch and really interesting. The fact that you could rewind and fast forward time and try to see what the best decision was in certain situations only to find out maybe later that you didn't pick the best decision was also a really cool mechanic. The game didn't blow me away with graphics, but I really thought that some of the cool things and fun, hilarious kind of antics of some of the things that happened with these younger people, even though maybe it wasn't intentionally supposed to be funny, ended up being quite entertaining. I really do think that the people who wrote the dialogue for Life is Strange maybe were a little bit older than the people who they were trying to write for, and so they didn't really understand how younger people talk today, but it still was equally hilarious. Now. Why isn't Life is Strange higher up on this countdown? It's very simple, because up through episode 4 of Life is Strange, spoiler alert, the choices that you make in the game definitively and concretely affect everything that's happened in the game up to that point. You can actually have certain characters live or die and the game continues on. You can have some characters that are written out of the picture and other ones that are a big part of the story because you made one decision or another. And I really like that. 
until the end of episode 4 and into episode 5 when, ladies and gentlemen, it's all erased. And it really is kind of a bait and switch in that regard. And so when the game really did end in the final episode, I was a little disappointed because I was like... Man, you know, they advertise the game as this is going to be really the, be the first game to choose your own adventure where your decisions concretely affect stuff. And then at the end of the day, it really didn't. It ended up actually being a little bit deflating. But overall, as a complete package, Life is Strange is a great game. It's a fun thrill ride. It's a mystery that goes on throughout the entire game that you really don't get your answers to till the very end. The time manipulation mechanic is a lot of fun. And ultimately, I did enjoy it, and I'm glad that I played it. It certainly didn't live up to the expectation that I set for it after the first episode, but it still was a great gameplay experience, which is why it ranks at number 8 in my Game of the Year Awards countdown. Coming up next, a game that I purposely avoided all spoilers for ended up being one of my favorite games of the year, and actually one of the most successful playthroughs I've done in quite some time. Check it out. 